Let's give it a try. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. And this, if this is your first time, welcome to my channel. My name is Bella. I'm a life and self vlogger, currently pregnant with baby number two. Very much so lately in my third trimester. <laughs> Apologies for all the animals that you hear in this video. There is no light today. So it's either we are on this side of justice with, you know, let me actually remove these things because I feel like they look like my nipples actually. But we're on this side with the animals making noise or we're on the other side of the house with the generators making noise. So it felt like this was the better option out of the two. So this is where we're going to use it for. Today I'm going to be talking about another interesting, exciting, but slightly complicated part of the whole pregnancy, labor and delivery experience, which I feel doesn't get talked about enough. And I decided to be the one to start this conversation because it is so necessary. Like I said, pregnant, this is my second child, so I've had some experience, about a year's worth of experience breastfeeding in the past. And today I just want to talk through that Talk about things that I wish I had known, talk about things that I feel like I did wrong and basically speak on what I feel like I'm going to do differently this time. So if this is what you're interested in or if you're just curious to know what it's really like because <laughs> it's an interesting one but if you're interested in knowing what it's really like then please keep on watching. Before you continue please don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed. And please give this video a thumbs up so that I know that you're still enjoying pregnancy content. There's not a lot of time left for us to enjoy pregnancy content because eventually it will come to an end. But as at now, when so much is happening, I hope that you're... Okay, now that we've established the fact that the animals in this compound are not going to respect my choice to do this, to film, let's just get started. So last time I breastfed was starting from the 19th of March 2019. So 19319, that was when Zoe was born. Before that period in time, I also I actually had a lot of um, leakage, which I mean one could see as colostrum. At that point in time, I didn't really see it as colostrum. I just saw it as a pregnancy symptom it's actually one of the things that led me to know that I was pregnant in the first place so I had been experiencing this leakage on and off since I was about five months pregnant and then by the time I had Zoe I started breastfeeding I feel like from the onset I kind of had a semblance of an idea that the latch her latch wasn't the best and I say this because in a lot of videos that you watch, you hear that, you know, the whole of your nipple, like the dark part should be at least as, as much of it as possible. But I felt like her mouth was so tiny, so I didn't really want to force it. I think I would have to close these windows. Hold on. So yes, I felt like, I felt really bad trying to get her to get more of my boob in there. So I kind of settled for whatever it is that she was willing to collect. And thus began our breastfeeding journey. So the first day when I had her, it was purely colostrum. Colostrum is like a yellowy, orangey type of, like your first milk that comes out. It's not a lot, it's very little, but most times it's sufficient for the baby because the baby's stomach is literally like this tiny on the first day. So we did that the first two or three days and not two or three days actually, I think the first 24 hours we had colostrum, eventually we got to another stage which was now the transitional milk which is lighter than the regular milk, it's a bit more on the watery side, still slightly coloured, at least from my experience, still slightly coloured, not as like white or yellowy as you would expect your milk to be. I remember the night that either the night I came back, the night I went back home, so I had Zoe at about 11 p.m. 
11.42 or so p.m. on the 19th. So I stayed all through the 20th in the hospital and then on the 21st I went home. So on the night of the 21st when I went home is when my milk came in. <laughs> the macho milk. And now how you know that your milk is coming in is because oftentimes you will become engorged. When you're engorged it literally means that your boobs are so full and they feel hard like rocks. And that is kind of what started off the official journey. So at that point in time I had a lot of milk, more milk than Zoe could consume at the time. So I decided that it was a good idea to start pumping as well as breastfeeding her. And I think that's one of the best decisions I made, alternating between pumping and breastfeeding her because even though she refused for the most part to take a bottle, I think it helped to maintain my um, milk supply because it seemed like I needed more milk than I did. So I started doing that. Along the lines, it felt like things were going well. She was eating every so often. I didn't have her on any kind of schedule. We were going purely on by demand and stuff like that. And I felt like that worked for us until the point in time when she began to cluster feed. So it could be a week after a baby is born. It could be two weeks after a baby is born. I think mine was closer to maybe like 10 days, so in between. And all of a sudden, they go from eating maybe every two to three hours. They can start eating like every 15 minutes. And by this point in time, the nips were already getting sore. I had already been putting on like, I think I used to use shea butter or something. I didn't want to use anything that I felt could be potentially harmful. See, I'm just touching them as I'm talking to you. I didn't want to use anything that I felt was going to be potentially harmful to her. So I think I was using raw shea butter. Um, I don't know if eventually I got some kind of nipple cream as well, but I was using that. But what I noticed, and this is going to be a bit graphic, is that they started to get cracked. Um, they also started to get, not bloody, but then your nipple is one color normally. It's like a brown <laughs> color. But then when it's kind of like inflamed or when it's, it's finally getting the use, it's getting used as much as it ends up getting used when you're pregnant, it starts to have like a bit of a pinky hue. So kind of like a slight inflammation type of look. And I remember the point in time that we finally started cluster feeding and it was like we were on the breast back to back and I started to feel the pain. I was so confused by this pain. I felt like, you know, I have been doing this for some days why is this all of a sudden randomly happening <laughs> and eventually it got to the point where i would feed her and i would be in so much pain as i'm feeding her and then i wouldn't want to feed her in the next 15 minutes my aunt had to come into my room one of those days when i was crying and zoe was crying zoe is hungry annabelle is not willing <laughs> annabelle is not willing to feed her and at that point in time, because she was still so young, I don't know why, but I didn't feel I didn't feel right introducing the bottle. That's one of the mistakes I made. <laughs> but I didn't feel right introducing a bottle to her at that point in time because that would have actually rectified the situation and given my boobs some time to heal. But my aunt came in, she begged me, and I thought, please just do this. I'm like, I literally just fed her now. I cannot continue. She cannot be hungry. I just fed her. She begged me and she basically told me the thing that I think saved my breastfeeding journey. Because at that point in time, I feel like nobody would have blamed me if I stopped. I finished pushing out the child. I didn't scream when I was pushing out the child. I didn't make noise. So I didn't need to establish any way that I had a high threshold of, for pain. But at that point in time, for me to be like, this is too much. I don't want to do this anymore, it's too painful. I feel like it, it was something that I would not have felt bad saying to anybody. So she told me, she said, I should keep on going to the two week mark. And that by the time I get to that two week mark, things will change. And that's how I kept on going to the two week mark. I would cry and stuff like that. I saw like three or four days to that two week mark. But guys, I kid you not. As soon as I got to that two week mark, it was like my hormones had changed to accommodate the fact that there was somebody sucking on me. It was like 
Zoe's latch had gotten better. It was just like everything was falling into pleasant places. And all of a sudden, an experience that started off being so traumatic became something that I almost looked forward to. It became like an amazing bonding experience for Zoe and I. And stayed that way. <laughs> I stayed that way until I eventually stopped breastfeeding. I'll talk about when I stopped breastfeeding. So during the period of time when I was breastfeeding Zoe, like I said, she refused to take the bottle. I actually tried a couple of different bottles. I'm wondering if it is because I left it for so long because I I did try her like once when I was still when I still she was still a newborn. But for the most part I was with her, so I didn't really feel see the need or feel the need to use the bottle and I think my mom had tried her maybe once as well or twice and it was obvious that she was kind of struggling with the concept of a bottle now that she has seen the goods you know like she's seen the good things out there but um so yeah we didn't really get the hack of that every once in a while she would take it if there was no other choice like she would see that her mother is not around and stuff like that she would take it she won't really finish it she'll be spitting most of it out and stuff like that but um yeah i noticed that the few times that i went out without her so if i had an event or something like that i would come back and she would pretty much be like ravenous like she hasn't eaten so no matter what it is that they gave her she wouldn't finish her bottles or anything like that so eventually i would kind of still have to rush back home to give zoe a bottle so she couldn't she didn't really spend a lot of time eating with dg she didn't really bond with him in that way <laughs> So now, like, now there are guys, but like, <laughs> yeah, so, um, I realized that in as much as it was such an inconvenience for me, it was something that I was capable of doing at the time because I wasn't working yet and I had more time on my hands. So it was a thing where we were constantly together. If she was with my mom or somebody, I lived in my mom's house, she was with my mom or somebody, they could just easily bring her to me and I would just feed her. And we did a lot of night feeds, a lot of dream feeds together. And I do want to say that, in as much as it is not my intent to go down this road a second time, I do feel like that is where a lot of Zoe and I, Zoe and I's bond was established in the process of breastfeeding. And this is just to say, really early on in the video, even though I don't know if it's early anymore, that if you can, and if you can stick it out as much as you can, I think it is a beautiful experience that only the mother and the child can really explain what it does for for them but there's just a certain level of intimacy that is attached to breastfeeding cool so I went through this couple of months by 11 or so months she had obviously started doing solids but in between we still used to give breast milk and then at the 11 month mark she already started she was already having teeth and she started to bite me and it was at that point that I decided within myself, very quietly, didn't say anything to anybody because there were people out there, family and friends alike, that were riding on the high of, yes, yeah, so no, our daughter is breastfeeding, she's breastfeeding to a year, right, ta, 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 ta. Me, in my mind, I was like, I didn't sign that contract with anybody. I'm not a hero. I'm not trying to, like, after six months, the child doesn't really require it as much. It's not as essential for their growth. So for me, I just kept going because I enjoyed it, to be honest, and I liked the closeness. I liked the fact that it felt like something that only me and her could share. But by the time she started biting me, I was like, yeah, it's time. So within that period in time, I weaned her and eventually she started drinking from the bottles. So she would drink from the bottle and eventually after she started drinking from the bottle for like that till she was like a one year old she was still drinking bits of breast milk but i transitioned her into like kids milk or baby milk that cow and gates like formula type milk after she turned one because she still wanted one feed at night she started depending on the feeding to go to sleep so she started depending on one milk basically to go to sleep at night but that's a different story entirely so that was pretty much my breastfeeding experience. It started off really rocky. It started off very confusing. But at the end of the day, I enjoyed it and it did feel to a certain extent that it went by really quickly. I'm not going to lie. By the time I stopped at 11 months, I could have kept on going to 12, but I didn't see the need. 
and I felt like I had already done so much that one extra month was not going to do any harm and to be honest I stand by that <laughs> I'm happy that I stopped when I did because I've heard so many stories it was when she started actually biting me so she had already started getting teeth earlier on but by the time she actively started biting me I was like yeah this is my sign to dip okay so during that period in time um, I didn't really utilize a lot of things I think I tried out things more just for the excitement of trying out things I used to have I used to drink a lot of tea at that point in time so I bought a mother's milk tea before I came in I didn't I wasn't very regular with it or anything like that I just used to take it every once in a while the one thing that I did take consistently all through my breastfeeding journey was pap I had pap as breakfast at least five times of the seven times in a week and initially it did start out being okay yes because I want my supply to be up but I realized that like it was just really comforting to me <laughs> in the morning so I can't really attest to why I committed to that but I do feel like eating pap a lot helped that's the one thing that even beforehand the closer I get to delivery I'm going to start introducing into my routine again is having pap every morning I feel like that was really good for me I did try out a couple of breastfeeding cookies but I didn't really like the way they tasted because a lot of them are oat based which is another thing oatmeal and stuff is supposed to be really good for breastfeeding but I don't like oats so I never really did that but that is pretty much all I did so I kept it really simple I didn't feel the urge or the need to learn more about it because for me once I had crossed over that first hurdle it was enough like what else why am I trying to be a savior now I didn't start thinking about my breastfeeding experience until it started happening to me and that's something that I'm doing much differently at this time as far as the way that my head worked almost four years ago now because though it's going to be four years in like five months almost four years ago now was pregnancy was number one baby was number two postpartum was number three and then I didn't even really think about breastfeeding like I said until it was time postpartum as well I kind of thought about it. I just touched on it but now having the experience that I have I it's definitely breastfeeding is definitely baby and breastfeeding are like on the top of the list the pregnancy is now at the bottom of the list and then postpartum is somewhere in the middle and I just want to have a happy and healthy experience this time if i can avoid scenarios where i am in pain and discomfort unnecessarily obviously i will go for them and there's so many things that i could have done or i feel like i could have done at that point in time that now i want to be more aware of so there's definitely going to be a part two to this because i mean until i try these things i can't really attest but some of the things that i'm doing this time is one i'm going to be having a lot of areola massages so for the first two weeks before i breastfeed i'm going to be massaging my breasts um with warm water this helps because it keeps the nipples like tender they are not hard they are naturally moisturized by just water before the baby meets in because the baby saliva it plays a part in initiating the breastfeeding process because it's what sends a signal to your brain that it's time to breastfeed but it doesn't like normal saliva it doesn't moisturize in any way i don't know how i feel anymore about nipple creams and shea butter and stuff like that i'd rather not have the baby have to interact with that so as as a natural preventative measure i also have gotten these silverettes these were things I was wearing in the beginning of the video that were making it look like my boobs were literally, my nips were literally standing up at attention. They're pure silver and they just help to soothe and keep the moisture within your nipples without you having to apply, apply other things. Like I don't want to apply any oil, I don't want to apply any cream, anything at all. I just want my child to just be interacting with me and that is pretty much it. Now this is more on the luxury side of things, not because it's expensive, but because it's not necessary. It is, you can probably get the same effects by using your nipple creams and balms and stuff like that, but with a lot of these creams and balms, unless it's 
raw shea butter unrefined and you know that it is unrefined there's nothing else in it i would just prefer to not put anything extra on my boobs that the baby doesn't have to interact with so that is this another thing that i've started doing or that i'm going to start doing as i get closer to the time is i am going to start with the breastfeeding products from now so i'm going to try out a lot of them i have like a smoothie one i have I would have shown you the packs that I have, but to be honest, they didn't sponsor me. I bought it with my own money. So maybe by the time I'm packing my hospital bag, because I am packing some of it with me, I will go out of my way to do that. But for now, they, they didn't say nothing to me. So like, I'm just not. Mostly also because I'm really lazy to get up. <laughs> but yeah. Um, so I'm trying out some of the cookies. I'm trying out the granola. I'm trying out the smoothies and like I said I'm going to start off with my pack again now these other things that are supplementary I just want to try them out because there is really no harm in increasing even if you have a good milk supply and it's enough for your baby there's no harm in having the ability to increase it in my opinion I also now have some semblance of a goal it's a very loose goal for my breastfeeding journey I would like a scenario where if I end up having another baby that doesn't take bottles, I can donate milk. So in an ideal world, I would prefer an oversupply because I want to be able to collect and donate milk. I've actually cleared out some space in faith in my freezer that's going to be dedicated to just breast milk. So I have enough for my baby and I have enough for anybody else that may need. Um, there are now a lot of breastfeeding um innovations i know there's a company i think the company that makes those cookies so maybe i will put their information down somewhere they also collect milk from donors and they pasteurize them and then they give them to other people this is because it's not everybody that has the capacity to produce milk and i feel like that's a common misconception people feel like because something is supposed to come naturally to you that it will and that is not the case Every time that you're pregnant, your experience can be completely different. So even as you're planning and stuff like that, you're saying, God willing, I will be able to breastfeed, but you just never know what is at the end of the line. And for a lot of people, depending on like, I know a lot of people, depending on like the amount of blood that you lose during labor, depending on the natural capabilities of your body, you might not be able to produce, but you still want your child to benefit from breast milk. So that is why they have certain facilities like that i think it's amazing that they have those in nigeria now as well because i knew that those things were like abroad but i didn't know that they were available in nigeria now that i do i would love to be a person that can donate in some way to another baby's well-being if i have enough to give i don't see why i cannot give i've already dedicated that the next year of my life i'm gonna be a cow moo <laughs> So yes, um, that's something I'm doing differently and that's why I want to just create a very healthy environment that is encouraging. I'm definitely still going to do my mother's milk because I just liked having tea and the tea had a lot of things that were apparently beneficial for breastfeeding. Whether or not they worked, like I said, you can never really know but my whole psychology is if you can do something that can improve your situation, why not? If it works, it works. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And I would love a scenario where I do get to around the same place as I got last time in Zoe, which is like 11, 12 months. I'm not really fussed about, you know, crossing that, that barrier. I, I think I'm pretty fine and happy with just getting there and feeling like I've given my child all that I can. And I just still want it to be a, an amazing bonding experience. I want it to kind of... I guess encourage the kind of closeness that I have with Zoe I would love to have with this other child and I feel like breastfeeding is the first um, step. It might not be for everybody, I mean if you can't, you can't and that is all there is and there are so many other ways to be intimate with your child and to build intimate relationships. I just feel like that was a really important factor and I would love to replicate it. That's one of the things that I would definitely love to replicate in my experience and yeah, besides that, I have decided to just remain as open-minded as possible to whatever it is that this journey 
um, has to offer. Be it a scenario where I can actually completely do it to the way I want to do it or be it a scenario that I'm not capable of doing it for one reason or the other. I want to be able to embrace whatever it is that comes along. I'm definitely working in faith, more in faith than in sight right now and hoping for the best and I hope that anybody else out there, I know there are moms that just don't want to do it from the beginning and I completely respect that as well. It is tasking on the body, it is tasking on the mind a lot as well. I don't think a lot of people talk about what it means. I don't know that a lot of people really think about what it means to give your body so wholeheartedly to another individual. It is an extremely large commitment to make and if you're already giving yourself to your child in so many ways and you don't want to do it by breastfeeding, that is perfectly fine. I feel like there's definitely a culture in Nigeria that makes it feel like if you don't do that you're a terrible mother and I don't subscribe to that, like I said. I did it for as long as I did it because I enjoyed it, not because I felt like, oh my god, I would be doing such a great disservice to my child. <laughs> Other children that they used to give formula, they still survive and they do pretty well. They are also close to their parents. They also love their parents for feeding them, taking care of them, nurturing them in other ways. So don't feel under that pressure to do that. Um, I just see it as a bonding experience personally. And it's something that if I can do, I will definitely do. So yeah, I will definitely update. By the time I get to like my three or four month mark with baby lovey, I feel like I should know what is really going on. You know, I should know what's really going on and then I should be able to give more information on this whole breastfeeding saga. But for now, take it as my wishful thinking, take it as my hopes and dreams. Take it more importantly as my prayers and please put me in your prayers as well and yeah thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video i hope it was as informative remember that these are just my views don't take them to the bank i am not a lactation specialist or anything like that i cannot be the one to tell you whether or not your baby has a good latch or whether they're tongue tied or anything like that I'm purely speaking on my experience and I hope that you take it as that and whatever you can gain from it or benefit from it, I hope that you do that as well. Do not forget that you are sugar, you are spice and you are a bomb master of rice.